All right, so hey there and welcome back everybody. All right, so today's video is pretty self-explanatory, but it's a, a video that I get so many questions on every year. Uh, so I thought I'd, you know, just kind of break down what I go through. I've been doing this a long time and, uh, you know, maybe I can give you guys some tips, share a little insight with the way that I do things. All right, so obviously the topic is gaining permission. So just a little background here. Let me kind of give you guys my background. So I do not have access to public ground to trap on. Uh, in my state, we don't have right-of-way trapping. And I own five acres. Okay, you guys have seen the numbers that I put up over the years. Obviously, all that fur does not come off five acres. So that means that all my catches, all the fur that I put up throughout a year comes off of private ground, which means all the ground that I trap is somebody else's. Um, it's not government ground, it's somebody owns the ground and I've had to actually go up, have a conversation with these people and basically, uh, you know, talk them into allowing me to come on their ground. No different than if you would get permission for deer hunting and everything else, right? Now, there is definitely a right way and a wrong way uh, to go about doing this and there's also a few things that, you know, maybe you wouldn't think about. So that's what this video is going to cover. Alright, so first off here, I've made just a little cheat sheet. So first is finding, uh, finding good ground, right? So not all grounds created equal. I live in, you know, corn and bean field central of the country, right? So although you have, uh, you know, big open field, it's not gonna hold a lot of life, right? Um, you know, the critters are gonna be focused in certain areas. So finding the right ground is a start. You just can't go out to some random, random field, you know, and expect to catch a lot of stuff. So this just comes with experience, uh, you know, driving around, understanding critter movements. Google Earth is your best friend in this situation. Uh, you know, following around anything that has a drainage ditch or a creek or a block of timber uh, is going to going to hold the critters. Uh, you know, and then they're going to funnel in and out, and you, you know, use the field and the contours. Um, to get back and forth. But if you can find a piece of ground that's got a creek or a ditch or something, definitely look for that. Something else to look at is having ground in a loop. And what I mean by that is, uh, you know, whenever you start running these lines, you're gonna run them in, in a, try to run them in a circle, not make a lot of backtracks. And if you've got a piece of ground that you've got to travel eight or 10 miles to go to, more than likely it's not gonna be worth it if that's the only piece of ground you have in that section. Uh, so whenever I start laying out a line, I like to try to find properties that are in, in a loop where I can just start making a, you know, a half circle and come out on the other side and you know, it kinda, it's just an efficiency thing, right? So look at that too. All right, so next we gotta find out who owns this ground, right? Uh, you know, it's around here it may be somebody that lives 50 miles away or, you know, in, the, in another town or something, you know. So, a couple of things here. Plot books, they're your best friend. If you have a farm bureau or you can even, uh, you know, call your city hall, things of that nature. And what a plot book is, is it is basically a, a book that has landowners broken up into sections. It's essentially just an aerial view of the whole section and it'll break it up and it'll tell you who owns the ground. I mean, that's, that's the important thing, right? Uh, so then you can kind of go back forth, see if it's a big farmer, small farmer, whatever, you know. Um, also, a lot, of, uh, a lot of counties anymore have GSIs. And now this is a huge advantage because a lot of these GSIs are online. Uh, you can get codes, you can pay a small fee. Uh, some of them are even free, depending on what county you have. But, uh, you know, it's essentially a plot book online, so you can be driving around and actually just pull up it on your phone, right? Super convenient. Uh, plot books are, are a great advantage. I own several of them because obviously they change with, uh, you know, buying and selling a ground. But, you know, a lot of times you can, you can go, uh, you know, get one from the Farm Bureau if you want to go make copies of it. Um, I've got books just of copies of plot books. So all these things are beneficial to help you find out who owns the ground. All right, so obviously once we find out who owns the ground, now we have to go get permission. Now this is, this is where you gotta kinda do, do, a little bit of, uh, do a little bit of thinking about how you go about this, right? So first things first, we know who owns the ground. So a lot of my ground obviously is ground that uh, is owned by, by farmers, right? Uh, they own large sections of ground. 
Now you may be tempted to go try to stop him out in the middle of a field or something. Don't do that. Don't take this farmer, don't take his time away. If he's out in the field planting or shelling corn or whatever, don't, don't be that guy, okay? That's only gonna start you off the relationship in a bad way. So I like to meet my landowners in person. Obviously, this doesn't go all the time. Sometimes you actually have to pick up a phone, make a phone call, but you end up with a better relationship if you actually have that face-to-face -face contact, right? Uh, another thing is, so understand that whenever you're going to be trapping on this land, you're going to be in a vehicle most likely. So you're going to be driving this vehicle around for, you know, five, six, seven days a year, depending on, or even longer, you know, depending on how long you trap that ground. So I've got my little Nissan truck sitting over here, right? That's the, that's the vehicle that I trap out of. So whenever I go contact landowners, that is the vehicle that I show up in. You know, don't drive up in your wife's little car that gets good gas mileage or, you know, you're, if you're running around in your big lifted truck to make, make an impression, don't do that. Come up in a vehicle that, you know, you're going to be using then. So that way that, that landowner can, can put two and two together, your vehicle versus, versus you. And I always tell people that too. I was like, you know, this is the vehicle that I'll be driving. So if you see me parked on the side of the road or down the street or whatever, you know it's me and not somebody else. You know, give them that sense of comfort, right? Uh, you know, because they're just giving you, you know, they're, it's a privilege for them to be, uh, you know, giving you permission here, right? Another thing, whenever you come up and meet these people, you know, your appearance says a lot, right? And I'm not talking about showing up in a suit and tie. You know, I, I, w I honestly wouldn't do that. But I also wouldn't show up in greasy, ragged out clothes that I've been working in all day, right? You know, something simple, like a nice clean, nice clean shirt, decent pants, you know, make a decent impression. You know, don't, don't come up to these landowners, you know, looking like a homeless guy off the street, right? It, it's, I mean, these little things that people don't think about are important. And whenever you've talked to enough people over the years, you can kind of, uh, you can kind of start to figure out a, a system, I guess you would say, right? Another thing, and this is a big one, guys. Do not expect to get permission from every person that you go ask. This is a, this is a big one. It's almost like, well, it's very similar to, to y'all that watch my YouTube videos. And it's funny because over the years, and I mean, I've got hundreds of permissions, right? Spread out over multiple counties. About one in nine. One in eight, one in nine, which ironically enough is the number of people that actually hit the like button on my videos. So if you would and you found this video interesting up to this point, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up, hit that like button. Helps me out. But don't expect to get permission from every single person. Like I said, I honestly get permission about one in eight, one in nine. That means you're driving around, you're asking a lot of people before you actually get permission. And that's fine, right? You just got, that's just, that's just a numbers game. You have to you just have to accept that, right? All right, so we've talked about our, our vehicle. We're showing up in the same vehicle that we're going to be uh, gonna be trapping in. Clothing, obviously. So next is actually going about asking the permission, right? So there's a right way and a wrong way to do this. Obviously, you wanna come up, you wanna, I always try to, if I'm, uh, I always try to come up you know, not around dinner time, not in lunch. If I can catch these people, you know, in the afternoon, uh, I usually try to do it on the weekends, you know, Saturday, you know, mid afternoon, I start making my runs. All right, it does take a long time to do all this, but you know, you wanna be, you just don't wanna show up uh, after dark, you know, per se. It just sets off a, a bad tone for you. So we're gonna come up to the landowner, we're gonna introduce ourselves, we're gonna tell you, you know, my name, and then we're gonna get into, uh, you know, hey, would you mind if I was to set some traps on your property? Now, don't start off with, I wanna trap coyotes. Don't start off with, I wanna trap uh, raccoons or, or fox or anything. You know, cause what you'll find is a lot of these landowners will be partial to one species or another, right? And you don't know what that is. So you just wanna start off very gentle like, you know, Hey, would you mind if I set some traps on your property? And then you'll always, then you know a lot of times you say, yeah, yeah, I can see you doing that, but you know I I've seen a red fox or something you know go across the field. I don't want him to be trapped, right? Or you know a big thing here, which a lot of people don't realize, is 
a lot of farmers do not want you to trap coyotes. It's weird, I know, but you have to understand in their thinking, their thinking is that the coyotes keep the deer run off, which in turn saves their crops. I would have never thought of something like that, but that's the far, that's a mentality, you know, of some of these farmers. So I'd never start off with, hey, would you let me trap coyotes? Because you never know what they're thinking, right? So one other thing to consider is, is deer season, right? So like here in Illinois, we have the most screwed up deer season. Uh, you know, we'll have a firearm season for a weekend and then it'll skip a week and then we'll have another firearm season, skip a week and then another one. And it goes on for like four weeks uh, in a row like this, right? So a lot of these people will have, uh, you know, they'll be deer hunting or they'll have family that'll come in, you know, and deer hunt. So whenever you're going about uh, asking permission, uh, kind of just inform them, you know, hey, if you want me to, I'll stay out of here till after deer season, or I won't. Uh, I won't come in here and trap. You know, the week before deer season. Uh, a lot of these people will ask that of you regardless, but it's just something else that you can throw in and kind of just reinforce that you know you're serious about what you're doing and that you respect uh, what they're doing on their own property. So I'll start off. Would you mind me trapping? Yes or no? You kind of get into a conversation like that and. Well, I'll primarily be doing this, that, and the other. You know, have a legit conversation with these people, right? And then if you want, then you can start to go in a little bit of an education. Now, don't preach to these people. Nobody likes to be preached at. But it's very simple if you want to uh, just, you know, educate people. Because honestly, guys, <coughs> excuse me, honestly, the, the vast part of this country and the vast amount of people they're still of the, the thinking that, you know, whenever you say you're going to go trapping, they're thinking like Fox and the Hound Disney movie, you know, giant bear traps and with teeth and things like that. I mean, we all know that's not the case, but you have to understand for people that's not around it, this is their, this is their thinking. So I like to, I like to, I always like to have a couple of traps in my truck just to kind of educate people. Um, and you guys wonder why I use so many dog proofs. This is a lot of the reason, right? You can turn a no into a yes very easily. Uh, you know, would you let me trap? No, I don't think so. I don't. I have cats, and uh, you know, I just don't want you to to catch the fox and, and things like that. Well, then you just go to your truck and you pull out a dog proof, and you say, "Here, sir, have you ever seen something like this?" Nope. So educate them. This is a dog proof style trap. You know, with the right bait, you can set this around. I mean, I, I set this in farms all year round with farm cats all the way around, never catch them. It's all in the bait you use, right? But educate them a little bit. Understand that, you know, hey, this is a restraining trap. Uh, show them how the thing works. You know, a lot of people, like I said, just don't understand that. Understand it's a restraining trap. Uh, you're not gonna lose a, a, a paw or anything like that. You can release different things. So educate people a little bit. You know, show your intelligence too. Uh, you know, there is a stigma about the old timey dumb trappers. So I mean, you know, just kind of put that into perspective. Show them a little bit about these traps. You know, hey, you're gonna get caught up here. Uh, you know, there's, you know, explain that, you know, you don't wanna damage the, the foot of the critter. Just things like this that, you know, we as, as the trapping community take for granted, but a lot of people just do not, do not understand, right? So after you've had a good conversation with these people, uh, you know, obviously you may get a no, you may get a yes, you may get a, well, let me talk to my husband or let me talk to my wife and come back in a couple of days and stay on them. Don't, don't, uh, you know, don't be a pest about it, but you know, okay, well, I'll come back. I'll give you a call or I'll come back in a couple of days. All right. Different things like that. Now understand guys that a lot of, at least in my area, you know, you get these old farmers that they've got nothing to do. Whenever you go to trapping, they're gonna see you there and they're probably gonna be running your sets. I'm not saying they're gonna do everything, but they're gonna, they're gonna follow your trail. You know, I've had so many times where, uh, you know, I've come up to the property, parked at the house or whatever, and the guy comes out, well, you got something down there. I, I, you know, I went around and drove my golf cart around this morning, you got one. That's fine. Uh, it's only going to last for a little bit, you know, from year to year to year, they may stop, but you know, take that time, make that conversation. Yes, you may lose a little bit of daylight or time running, but it's these, 
it's this relationship that you can build with the farmer and you know whenever he goes and has coffee with all his other farmer buddies you know well i got such and such he got the raccoons out of my uh out of my barn you know that was and they're eating my feed you know so take care of the coon problem you know and that's how you go back from year to year it's amazing how you can build these relationships uh you know keep gaining properties so a lot of it's like i said just being a personable uh you know person to these type of people and like i said if at all possible guys meet these people in, in person uh it's it's a lot harder nowadays even to get a hold of people by phone simply for the fact that you know everybody's got cell phones now and nobody's got landlines and you know the phone book is kind of a thing of the past so uh you know just little things like this guys um have got me a lot of permissions over the years and i've got a book i keep them all wrote down another thing is you know obviously i fish a lot at the end of the year you know it goes a long way to maybe take the guy a bag of crappie or a bag of catfish or something you know uh you got a big dove shoot or something do that uh you know a lot of the old guys can't get out and squirrel hunt and that's something that they grew up eating you know so it's little things like this i mean i'm not saying you have to go pay them but pay it forward a little bit and you would be surprised how far uh little things like that go um <coughs> excuse me obviously <coughs> it's the corona cough yeah anyway uh you know i don't know how many times i've actually come up to a farmer and he's been unloading feed it goes so long to actually go up there throw a couple of bags of feed off his truck before you go and ask him permission people like to see that um, and then it goes without saying guys if you do get the permission be respectful uh you know here it rains non-stop it's it it is muddy the entire season it'll freeze up every now and then but it's usually muddy do not go ripping across the gentleman's field or you know making big ruts uh don't come peeling out of his field entrance with mud on your tires and slinging it down the road a half a mile little things like this don't don't do that they're going to remember that you know uh you got to remember this is a privilege they've given you uh to be on their ground so just kind of th keep these things in mind, guys. Like I said, I know I rattled off a ton of different things, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of little things that people don't think about, uh, you know, whenever they go about asking permission. And obviously, that's the only way that all this works is having good permissions. Um, I also like to, at the end of every year, I like to make contact with almost all my permissions. Just kind of keep them in front. Hey, I'm such and such, you know, because a lot, a lot of the times these people are only going to see you once a year. So they may forget, you know, and you don't want to be ripping up uh, at night. You know, I always tell people, hey, you know, I have to check because of my work schedule. I have to check the majority of my sets after dark. So if you see headlights down the road, do not be concerned. It's probably me. Uh, you know, little things like that. Just be a personable, uh, you know, person to these people. And, and you have good success, guys. So like I said, um, hope you guys took something from this video. Uh, I, I get questions all the time about it, and I can see where, you know, it could be a little intimidating to the guy out. You know, it's no different than this big trailer full of traps behind me. Uh, you know, building up a good list of permissions, it doesn't happen the first year. It takes a number of years, you know, and you're going to learn, you know, the more and more you do it, the more people you talk with, uh, kind of the way to kind of slip in there and, and kind of get the, get the answer that you want. Anyway, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, do me a favor, hit that like button. Uh, if you've got some things that I've missed on, definitely leave a comment below. You know, it's a big community and maybe I didn't touch on something that, uh, you know, other people would benefit from. So leave a comment. Always appreciate the comments. Till then guys, I'm gonna sign off. As always, I appreciate the view and we'll see you guys next time.